that song just penetrated the heart. And the feeling I had was not only remembering the people that touched me and touched me, but how lucky I am to be in a community that you make me better, we make each other better. It, it, this has been an amazing morning from Mary Ann's um, introduction to curiosity and Amy Rose and Gretchen. Ah, I'm taking a breath so I can just compose myself to, to speak about what I wanted to speak about this morning. And again, that's passionate curiosity. Our lives, I love that it's musical theater because our lives are about stories. That's what we are about. We're storytellers. From the beginning of time, we've told stories to each other, how we got here, stories about our creator, stories about how the universe started. And all the stories have evolved as we evolve. Our stories change, they get bigger, they have different information as we get to have more information. So um, I am passionately curious about the stories we tell because I know as a religious scientist, the stories that I tell affect the life that I live. The stories I tell to myself, the stories I tell to others makes a difference. Their life is affected by my story. And then my passion is what is the collective story that we tell? What's the big story? And the way we tell that these days is through movies. Movies are the big screen of consciousness that the whole culture, our culture, engages in. And so we can see these stories, how they affect us, how they make a difference, how they speak about something that the conversation that we have collectively. So this morning, I wanted to talk about how stories evolve and how we evolve and tell different stories. I brought these seeds because I wanted to start with the idea of evolution. In this packet is a whole flower. It's already here. Nothing it has to do but be planted, but it already exists. And in our faith tradition, we know that within us, the very seed of God, we have spiritual DNA. It's already in us. All we have to do is nurture it and plant it. And we do that by the stories that we tell. But the thing that we move to is that it's already done. It's already complete. There is something in us, something wonderful in us. Thank you, Marianne, for speaking about it, for Amy Rose and Gretchen to bring it forth. Something in us that we call God, that we call spirit, is wanting full expression as you right now. It wants that. And how do we talk about our story and especially our collective story? So I wanted today to talk about three things that help us with our story. Liberation, stories of liberation, stories of love, and stories of light. And how we engage in the collective as we talk about those things. How many people here have seen Barbie? Okay, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's not about a Barbie and people think, oh no, it's gonna be a light movie. It is one of the most dynamic conversations we're having in the culture. It's a story of liberation. It's a story of equality. It's a story of balancing our male and female this is up for us in the culture right now. This is happening now, and Barbie is a lighthearted, theatrical presentation of deep philosophical questions. So I wanted to talk about how the story is so big and how with Barbie, there's real possibilities. So in the beginning of the movie, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to wreck it for you and tell you the whole movie, but I can do the outline. In the beginning of the movie, the options for women was a baby doll. And when we play games, women and men, but I'm gonna use Barbie in this framework. When you have a baby doll, your baby doll, your baby's crying. 
your baby's hungry. You have to create scenarios to play. You just don't hold the doll. Oh, you burp the doll, you rock the doll, you play the doll. This is how we tell our stories. We engage in them. So in the story of Barbie, all of a sudden, in the evolutionary process, remember the seed, in the evolutionary process of being more than just rocking and playing, and we become more sophisticated in the way we live, all of a sudden, there is astronaut Barbie, doctor Barbie, construction worker Barbie, and young women have the opportunity to start playing in a new scenario. Believe me, I have granddaughters, and they set up the hospital. They break a leg of one of their dolls, and Dr. <laughs> Barbie comes in, and she patches it all up, and they have Band-Aids. That's how we play. That's how we play. We create the story. So this is a story of liberation. The story of Barbie is the liberation of getting a bigger story, telling it in a way that, um, that really makes a difference. So in this story, what happens for Barbie is she lives in Barbie land and everything's wonderful in Barbie land. And all of a sudden, Barbie's feelings come forward. And when her feelings come forward, she can feel not only for herself, but for other people. And she leaves the idea of the perfect life and comes into the idea of a real life. She can feel other people's pain. She can feel the suffering of other people. And it puts her at a place, should I stay in Barbie land or should I become more real? I think this is so culturally important because sometimes in the spiritual community, we're looking for that perfect fix where we'll never feel anything. And the pain comes and we don't know what to do with it. But it comes because we're real and we love and we have feelings. And the story goes on with Barbie. She becomes more real as she's able to manage the world, the fake world, the world where everything is so perfect. I don't know anybody who's living in that world. <laughs> Uh, we've all made it into the real world, which is such a gift. And I say this because our own hearts, the place that we can turn to within ourselves where God is, is allowing us to know we are equipped. We are those seeds of consciousness that are changing and evolving and bringing the idea of liberation more than. The possibility of more than is happening right now. And it, this is the cultural fun way of bringing that idea forward. So um, I just, that's my passion. It's the cultural conversation that we're always having. And so I really highly recommend that if you haven't seen it, um, to get an idea and see it on the big screen. Now, one, so you might not think this is relevant. Oh, well, what is she talking about, Barbie and church? But I want to say, this is what happened recently. It actually happened on June 22nd, 2023. Pastor Rick Warren, who is head of the megachurch Saddleback, Southern Baptist Convention ousted him. He's the biggest church in the Southern Baptist Convention. They ousted him June 22nd because he hired a female minister. This is the culture that Barbie's movie is up against. Possibilities that we never had before. They're amazing. They're here. And we just have to push through the resistance. The way that he said it, when uh, it was on the news, everyone, everyone uh, got to see it, but what Rick Pastor uh, Rick Warren said is, we have to decide if we will treat each other as allies or adversaries. So I know as religious scientists, we move into the idea of moving past our limitation. 
And I speak this because if you have a place you feel, I can't do it, it won't happen, it's never going to happen, it's happening. It's happening. And when you pay attention to the cultural conversation, you'll be able to see it. It isn't the big splash of all the adversity that we're looking at and all of the anger that's out there and all of the angst. Underneath it, that seed of liberation is finding its way, and we're part of that. So I ask you, the places in yourself that feel shrink or you shrink or you don't feel liberated, you add to the collective consciousness. It's our work as religious scientists to stretch that out and liberate ourselves from the idea that we're anything less than good, that we're anything less than God. The other thing on the collective, so to balance that out, who has seen Oppenheimer? Okay, so we have Barbie and we have Oppenheimer. We have the mind of Oppenheimer because he's brilliant. He's, he's about how the mind can create amazing things. And in the beginning of the movie, he hooks up with, uh, he meets uh, Albert Einstein and they're talking. And the mind is, can look at the world and understand things. And in religious science, we are the mind and the heart. So on the big screen of consciousness, the mind and the heart are having a conversation. In the Oppenheimer movie, it's so interesting what goes on there because what we come to in that is that we have to make choices. Oppenheimer is responsible for helping create the atom bomb. And what that brings to mind in the movie when you're watching it is you uh, have the ability with mind to create or destroy. And we're always in those choices. What are we creating? Letting our mind create something new, something more, something greater. And so the movie is involved with his personal sense of having to live in the world, make choices, understand how things move, and um, come to some conclusion and make some decisions. So I love that he had come to the idea that the choices he was making, he had to think long and hard, and he and Albert Einstein conversed during this time of knowing the world was changing and they had to make big choices. But in the end, uh, they, you, I'm not gonna wreck the movie, you'll have to see it, but as a collective cultural experience, it's about choice. And we're at a very, very crucial time. We can destroy ourselves or we can go forward. I truly do believe the work of us as religious scientists, as all people of faith, is that we want to create. And our tagline has always been a world that works for everyone. That's what we're asking ourselves to create. When I see the cultural conversation going on, I see how deep it is and how we're calling ourselves to something wonderful. Albert Einstein wrote a letter to his daughter I'm just going to read an excerpt from it. But to his one daughter, he wrote this letter and he said, when I proposed the theory of relativity, very few understood me and what I will reveal now to uh, transmit to mankind will also collide with the misunderstanding and prejudice in the world. There is an extremely powerful force that so far science has not found a formal explanation for. It is a force that includes and governs all others, and it is behind any phenomena operating in the universe and has not yet been identified by us. This universal force is love. When scientists look for a unified theory of the universe, they forget the most powerful unseen force. Love is light that enlightens those who give and receive it. 
Love makes people feel attracted to others. Love is power because it multiplies the best we have and allows humanity not to be extinguished in their blind selfishness. Love unfolds and reveals. For love, we live and die. Love is God and God is love. It's a much longer letter, but the idea that the greatest minds in the universe understand love as a power. It's not a passive anemic something. Love is a force that is in us. We have the power in every situation to bless something, to bring forth good, to bring something better coming forth in a perfect and right way. There is that in us that's calling us. So in my passionate curiosity about the conversations we have collectively, I can see and I'm inspired to know that all I have to do when I see a situation is bless it or pray for it or hold love as an opportunity right there. And then the last is light. So we had liberation, love, and light. And light is acquiring a vision that allows us to see what is already there. Acquiring a vision that allows us to see what is already there. This is one of the gifts of every Sunday in this community. Reverend Sandy, Sir uh, Kirk, our musicians, they always remind us of what's already here. This is an amazing place to be. And we're in an amazing community that allows us to go deeper with that. You know, if you walk into, a, into darkness, all you have to do is switch on the light and the darkness disappears. Our call is to switch on the light and let the darkness disappear and let the cultural conversation of liberation come forward. We want to liberate ourselves from the idea of adversity, of war, of hatred. We want to use the power of love to transform the world. And the way we do that is to go within, find that power within us, and to know each and every one of us are the most powerful beings that we can be. Now, since this, I didn't know this was theatrical theater month, but I'm so glad I was prepared because, honestly, I'm writing to Mattel, and I want them to have a Minister Barbie doll. So, when you're a minister, you get a stole. Well, I'm going to make sure when they get this picture, this stole is the one that all ministers should be wearing. So thank you for listening to my passionate curiosity. Go Pink! <laughs>